Welcome back to Richard French Live. I'm Andrew Whitman. You're looking live outside the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. That is the nexus of everything happening in Washington today. If you have missed the breaking news, Robert Mueller's investigation into the Russia's influence in the 2016 election, as well as any connections to Donald Trump or any uh, obstruction of justice from Donald Trump, that investigation is now over. Robert Mueller submitting his report to the Attorney General of the United States, William Barr, earlier today. We do not have any details about what is in that report. We don't even know exactly when we're going to find out any details. Uh, DOJ official uh, saying that there will be no additional uh, indictments that come from Mueller's investigation. And Barr, uh, the Attorney General, suggesting in a letter to Congress that he might be in a position to brief Congress as early as this weekend on the principal conclusions, but there is no indication as to when the final report might be sent to Congress or when we, the American public, may get any sense as to what is in that final report. I'm joined now in the studio by Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. He's going to join me for some analysis and for some questions as we move forward. This, of course, a political issue as well as a legal one, and we'll be exploring both uh, aspects of this. Speaking of the politics, uh, this is a statement from Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, the two top Democrats, quote, now that special counsel Mueller has submitted his report to the attorney general, it is imperative for Mr. Barr to make the full report public and provide its underlying documentation and findings to Congress. It continues, attorney general Barr must not give President Trump, his lawyers or his staff any sneak preview of special counsel Mueller's findings or evidence, and the White House must not be allowed to interfere in decisions about what parts of those findings or evidence are made public. That the two, a statement from the two top Democrats, we have, oh, I'm sorry, the statement continues. The special counsel's investigation focused on questions that go to the integrity of our democracy itself, whether foreign powers corruptly interfered in our elections, and whether unlawful means were used to hinder that investigation. The American people have a right to the truth. The watchword is transparency. We also have a statement in from the top Republican in the U.S. Senate, Mitch McConnell. His statement, the attorney general has said he intends to provide as much information as possible. As I have said previously, I sincerely hope he will do so as soon as he can and with as much openness and transparency as possible. Let me bring in Dominic Carter now. And Dominic, based on what we know, what we think, and what we don't know, I don't get the feeling this is going to move the needle particularly in any direction. I mean, I'm glad you said that because now, to a certain degree, Andrew, the real politics start, the real political battle in all of this. What do I mean by that? Okay, what is the attorney general going to do? How is Congress going to be brief? And as we already know, the Democrats that control the House, they just don't want his interpretation of what's in the report. They want to see the actual report, which in all likelihood, the Attorney General of the United States, as of now, from what we know, and this, this is a fluid situation, is not going to turn that over. Another major question the Democrats are going to have, and this is why I say the politics really start now, uh, here are two safe assumptions. At some point in the next 24 hours, the president is going to tweet, no collusion. You mm -hmm. can take that to the bank. But also, the major question the Democrats are going to have, is, as it relates to the investigation, is was Mueller blocked at any point? Was he allowed to pursue everything that he wanted to pursue? Or did the Justice Department not sign off on certain areas that he wanted to pursue? That's a great question that I want to pose to uh, former federal prosecutor Roland Riopelle. He's still with us in our New York studios. Roland, uh, let's, let me ask you the question that Dominic just raised. Will we know if Mueller was blocked from pursuing anything? I mean, there's supposed to be a part of this process that would indicate whether he feels like he was, but will we, the people, know? Yes, yes, because the, the rules uh, that govern Mr. Barr's disclosure to Congress require him to disclose to Congress if at any point uh, Mr. Mueller was overruled or prevented from bringing a charge that he recommended. And indeed, some of the reporting I've seen indicates that um, that did not happen. But if it did happen, it would have to be reported to Congress. Roland, the, the Mueller investigation is now over and we wait for the conclusions in his report, but that is not to say that the legal scrutiny of President Trump or his campaign is over. There are still other entities that are in, in uh, other prosecuting or potentially prosecuting entities that are still investigating, correct? 
Oh, sure, Andrew. I mean, we are still in the top of the third inning of Mr. Trump's legal problems as a whole. The Mueller investigation may be complete, uh, but, you know, the Southern District is churning along. The Eastern District of Virginia is churning along. Uh, there, the New York State Attorney General is churning along. The, this is really just the beginning of Mr. Trump's problems. And uh, all these offices will continue to investigate him uh, from now until the cows come home. Roland, is there anything that surprised you as we've led towards this release of the of the Mueller report to Attorney General William Barr? I mean, we've been trying to preview what was going to happen and how we were going to get the information. A any surprises in terms of what we know or, or maybe even what we don't know at this point? Uh, I was surprised that there were not additional charges uh, relating to the connections between members of the Trump campaign and the Russians. You know, we, we know that Jared Kushner was trying to set up a back channel to the Russians uh, so that he could communicate with them without being overheard by our own security services. Uh, you know, the June meeting that Donald Jr. and Paul Manafort attended with uh, Ms. Veselnetskaya appears to have just been a fizzle out, maybe. We, at least right now, I, I thought maybe there'd be more charges coming out of that somehow. We're not seeing any new charges. So the fact that there are new charges is a little surprising to me, frankly. And but it, there it is. Yeah, and it, and it doesn't sound like we're going to get any charges, at least through Mueller, when it comes to obstruction of justice. And I can just hear people who watch the show yelling at the TV set right now, we know he obstructed justice. He fired Comey and said he did it because of Russia. And he kept saying stuff publicly time and time again that to a lot of people strikes them as trying to or, or actually obstructing the, the process. How would you respond to those people? Is it a legal standard that we can't prove he obstructed it? or that there just isn't any there there? Oh, oh no, Andrew, I would respond to those people by saying, I'm not going to be at all surprised if the report does conclude that the president obstructed justice. But remember, there's a longstanding Department of Justice opinion and policy that you can't indict a sitting president. So if the president obstructed justice, and I'm not going to be shocked if the Mueller report concludes that he did, uh, that conclusion will be turned over to Congress for it to investigate and decide whether it constitutes grounds for impeachment. That, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure, I, I think there's a good chance the report will conclude that way. But, but isn't, wouldn't that be tarnishing the image of somebody who's not charged with a crime? And coming back to my earlier question to you, I thought that there was a policy in place that Justice Department's not supposed to do that if they're not prosecuting somebody. One of Mr. Mueller's specific tasks was to try to determine if the president, by his conduct, obstructed justice. He's got to deliver a conclusion on that point. Final question before. And, yeah, go ahead, Roland. Way, go ahead. Tarnishing someone, tarnishing someone who didn't commit a crime is very different, Andrew, than reaching a conclusion as to a person who is immune from indictment, right? There's a difference. If Mr. Mueller concludes that Mr. Trump committed no crime, he can deliver that uh, conclusion to Congress. If he concludes that he did commit a crime, but in fact he is immune from indictment, he can deliver that uh, conclusion to Congress. Finally, before we let you go, Roland, it's, the president has been all over the place over the last week. He, it seemed like he was losing it a little bit with the tweet storm over the weekend, but then he sounded very confident as the course of this week played out. Do you read anything into his state of mind or the way he seems to be acting, or is that just is that foolish in trying to read tea leaves? Uh, I think he's overwhelmed by anxiety and stress, and I think that explains a lot of what he's doing. Frankly, as an armchair psychologist, I thought it very strange that he struck out at John McCain, who left us, you know, seven or eight months ago. And it occurred to me, Andrew, that his vitriol directed at John McCain was really a transference of his vitriol for 
uh, Mr. Mueller. Mr. McCain and Mr. Mueller are two peas in a pod, right? They're both war heroes, people who've devoted their entire lives to the service of this country, and very different types of persons than our president. It struck me that hit the vitriol he directed at John McCain, which seemed to come out of the blue, is effectively the vitriol he has for Mr. Mueller. So I leave you with that bit of armchair psychology. And, and we appreciate it. We appreciate all the armchair, an, armchair analysis you've been able to provide for us. Roland Riopelle, former federal prosecutor. Again, Roland, thank you very much. Enjoy the weekend. Yeah, real pleasure to be here. All right. Meanwhile, we are waiting to hear from Chuck Schumer. Uh, we believe that that podium that you're looking at now, well, you, you can see the microphone, not the podium, but uh, there's a podium there, and we believe that Chuck Schumer, the major or the Democratic leader, the minority leader in the U.S. Senate, is going to come out and make a statement at some point in the next couple of minutes. While we wait for that, I want to turn to Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, who is joining me in the studio. And, and uh, Dominic, do, do, do Democrats have to ease up off the gas now? you think over the next couple of days until we know what's coming in from Mueller? Because it certainly doesn't look like it's going to be the windfall that a lot of Democrats were hoping for. It's definitely not going to be the windfall. And perhaps that's why we saw Speaker Pelosi say about a week ago that she was moving away from uh, from uh, looking to remove the president from office. Mm -hmm. I do want to say this, Andrew, while since I spend a lot of time in the Southern District, while there are no other recommended indictments, apparently, from the Mueller report, this is far from over. The, and I'm talking about the investigation element. The, the, the much more powerful attack on, in terms of the president of the United States, is not Mueller. That's only dealing with collusion. It's the Southern District of New York. What's on your screen right now? The payoffs to the women, Stormy Daniels, and, and uh, the Playboy Playmate, the inauguration funding, Trump's super PAC funding, and, of course, foreign lobbying of the administration. And, the and I'm glad you brought up the inauguration. One of the things that the Southern District is looking at is the fact that $175 million were raised, and th much of this money went to Trump hotels, mm -hmm. even though... They were not the lowest bid, and they went against the recommendations of the people that were making those decisions. So who overrode them? And, 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 and we don't know if these investigations will exclude, we don't know as of yet, the president's son the president's daughter, his son-in-law, they could be entangled in all of this as well. Trump campaign, or the Trump inaugural, by the way, raised somewhere between 50 and $60 million more than any other inaugural committee had ever raised before. And a lot of that did, in fact, go to the, uh, to the Trump uh, businesses, the Trump organization. Again, uh, uh, the big screen that you're seeing on your screen, that big uh, window, is a podium in Washington where we expect to hear from uh, Democratic, uh, the, the Democratic leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer. We're expecting that statement uh, at some point soon. Meanwhile, we are starting to get more reaction from the political world. Uh, Lindsey Graham chiming in. I have always believed that it was important that Mr. Mueller be able to do his job without interference, and that has been accomplished. I think some people would say, slow your roll, let's make sure that, that was, there was no interference. Uh, Senator Robert Menendez, Democrat of New Jersey, the American people deserve to know what is in the Mueller report, period. If the report is not made public, Congress and the American people will be left wondering what the Justice Department is hiding, and that will further erode public confidence in the rule of law. And Dominic, it certainly sounds like, from what we're hearing from Pelosi, from Schumer, uh, from Menendez, that's going to be the next big argument for Democrats. We need to see the whole report. Absolutely. And that's why I say this political battle, Andrew, is far from over. Democrats are going to scream bloody murder that they must see the report, that they must talk to Mr. Mueller to see if he was hampered, hampered in any way from conducting or looking in areas that he wanted to go. So the bottom line, it appears as we speak tonight here uh, live on television, no additional indictments, mm -hmm. so it, it appears the report is going to show no collusion. But again, this is far from over. 
not not only the Southern District of New York, but as we heard Roland uh, Riopel uh, state, you have uh, other U.S. attorneys that are looking at similar matters. You have the Attorney uh, General of New York State, Letitia James, that is looking into matters uh, of, of the uh, Trump organization. So this is far from over. We've talked about some of the Democratic reaction from elected officials. As for the Democratic presidential candidates, they are all chiming in as well, too. And pretty much if there's a Democrat running for the White House, they have said, the public needs to see the full report, echoing the comments that we've heard from the elected officials. It seems like that is the battle cry from Democrats as we await the details uh, on the Mueller report. Again, just to summarize where we are, uh, Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election and possible obstruction of justice is over. We don't know any of his conclusions. He has submitted that report to the Attorney General of the United States, William Barr. The Attorney General is now going through it. Uh, others will put eyes on it as well, looking for what information is confidential and what information is privileged. Uh, the Attorney General is saying he is hoping to be able to brief Congress possibly as early as this weekend about the principal conclusions in Mueller's report, the executive summary, if you will. But there is no timeline on when Congress will actually see the full report. And of course, that means we have no idea when the American public will see the full report. We're going to take a quick break here on RFL. More analysis on this historic day right after this.